the things you'll need to replace an element. An ohm meter is very handy to have but not essential. Needle nose pliers, regular pliers, a quarter inch or six and a half mil socket driver, a wooden spatula or even a plastic ruler and this a continuity testing screwdriver is very handy. To ensure you buy the right new elements check the panel on the side to see which model of kiln you have. Then when you order your new element you'll need to tell us if you need a middle element or if you require an element that fits either the top or bottom, a TB element like this one. First thing to do, turn off the power. Then open the lid of the kiln and have a look inside and see if you can see the break of the element. Follow the element as it wraps around the chamber. The elements are bedded down in the brick so they might be hard to find. If you struggle to see the elements lower down in your kiln, try using your phone. You should always be able to spot a broken element. It won't be a hairline fracture there will be a clear defined gap between the two broken pieces. Once you've identified which element needs replacing, you'll need to first disconnect it from the outside of the kiln. Start by unscrewing the control box on the front of the kiln. As you can see here, it should just flip forward. Then unscrew the heat shield from the front of the kiln. There should be four screws on either side. Now if you do have an ohm meter, you can use it to check to see if you're getting a circuit through what you suspect is the broken element. To be sure you're not reading the circuit through another element, disconnect the cable from one of the ends. Then put the probes on either end, and as you can see on the top one here we're getting nothing. The next one, 6.1 ohms. If you place a finger on one end of a continuity screwdriver, and touch the other end, it will light up. So if we add the broken element into this circuit, the light doesn't come on. If however we add the next element to the circuit, the light does come on. So now we can be certain which element needs replacing. Grab the old connectors with the pliers and unscrew them from the element. Remove the porcelain insulators. Using the needle nose pliers, pull out part of the old element and carefully remove it from the inside of the kiln. When an element breaks at a high temperature, the outer crust of the metal will break and the molten metal will ooze out from inside. This can embed into the brick and it is vital that you remove it. You may need to dig into the soft brick with a screwdriver to get it all out. Place the new element in your kiln and thread one of the ends through the hole. If you have kiln wash on the bottom of your kiln, put a piece of newspaper down there to protect the element. The elements will have crimps in them that line up with each corner of the chamber. When you've got the whole element in, get your wooden spatula or plastic ruler and go round just pressing the element down. If an element looks too short and is jumping the corner, take it out and give it a tug with your hands, then push it back in. You can only do this with a new element. If you try this with an old element, it will be brittle and it may well snap. If a new element looks too long, pinch together the coils with the point nose pliers. Just make sure the coils don't touch. Replace the porcelain insulators on the outside of the kiln. With every new element you get a pair of new brass connectors. Don't use the old ones as you won't get such a good connection. Just compare the difference between these two new ones and this old one. Thread them onto the new elements outside the kiln. Use the pliers to hold them and screw them as tightly as you can onto the ends of the elements. It's not a bad idea to check these connections after you've test fired the kiln. The expansion and contraction of the metal after a firing can sometimes loosen these joints. With either pair of pliers, snip off the end of the elements. 
Those brass connectors should now be tight against the porcelain insulators. To be sure we get the best possible connection, get the loop on the end of the cable and sand it down till it's nice and shiny. Do the same for both ends of the element, then using the brass screw connect them up to the ends of the element. Make sure the loops don't point towards the metal casing. Now we can test it all with our continuity screwdriver. Replace the heat shield. Screw down the control box. Close the lid and let's turn on the power. A quick test to see if all the elements in this kiln are working. Get four pieces of paper and poke them in touching each of the four elements in the kiln. Then let's do a quick test fire. So press number four, user one, enter, rate full, enter. We're going up to 100 degrees, press enter. We'll hold for one minute, press enter. Rate 2, nothing, press enter, press enter again, and the kiln's off. We're now test firing up to 100 degrees, and when it gets there we want it to hold for one minute. Now we won't actually let it get to 100 degrees, but it's just a quick way of turning the kiln on and getting it to fire on full power on all four elements for a test. After about 30 seconds, open the lid and see what's happening inside. Don't worry, the lid switch will cut all power to the elements when you open it. So on this test we can see the top element has burnt the paper, the next one down has singed the paper, as has the next one and the bottom one has burnt. All four elements are working. Press abort to stop the test firing and that's it, your kiln is now fixed. It would be a good idea now to fire the kiln empty up to a cone 06 just to settle the elements into the brick. After you've done that, just check that none have bulged out, and also if you wanted, just check that the connections outside are still good.